So that's an, just an indication of a growth score breach and, uh, yeah, and things like that. So you know, we're finding um, um, there's some data out of Europe that talks about dust in homes. Uh, and the homes are 100 miles away. And we're looking at per, per uh, kilogram, so for 2.2 pounds, um, 100,000 disintegrations per second in a kilogram of dust. Now, that's a lot of dust, but, but it, the Japanese sleep on the floor. Mm. So people 100 miles out are sleeping in a radioactive dust that's going to be you know, causing either lung ingestion or mouth ingestion, et cetera. So they're not out of the woods, and I, I think you were getting to the point uh, a minute ago that we've got a, a government that doesn't want to admit, and a medical community that will march in lockstep with the government. Unfortunately, I think they've forgotten the hypocritical, you know, but they um, they are uh, in a lot of cases refusing to say that um, these illnesses are radiation induced. Well, we're not seeing the radiation-induced illnesses yet except for the thyroid abnormalities in these children, although we are now starting to see uh, low white blood cell counts, which could be a preliminary indicator of leukemia developing, um, and apparently abnormal lung function in children. Uh, there's a lot of... There are, People are reporting a lot of nosebleeds in children, which means that their platelet count may be low, damaged by radiation exposure. Um, so there are indicators, but you see these are only anecdotes. And in medicine, you can't just take an anecdote and say, look, this is because of this, this and this. You have to do an epidemiological study compare an exposed population and their diseases to a non-exposed population, and that takes many years. A, B, it's expensive, and C, I, at the moment it doesn't seem like the doctors want to do that. Um, and so, And the other thing is that I'm finding it very difficult to get real data from the hospitals about the, the actual tests they're doing in their patients and what the real tests are showing. And without that data, I can't make judgments, nor can any other physician. Uh, so we're, we're like in the dark, you know, stumbling around in the dark, not really knowing what's going on. But clearly indicators would suggest that things um, are looking grim in Japan. You know, there was a story in the Wall Street Journal just this weekend, and basically they came to exactly the opposite conclusion. They said that the tragedy of Fukushima is that they shut the nuclear plants down, and and um, they estimate 100 people were killed or will be killed over 30 years from the, the numbers. Yeah, and that was... I went through this... Yeah, go on. I went through this on Three Mile Island as an expert, and the industry did the same thing then. They underestimate the release. They underestimate the dose from the release. They underestimate the population that receives the exposure, and they totally forget about internal emitters. And the net effect of that is you come up with these crazy low numbers. Yeah, well, that article in the Wall Street Journal was written by a physicist. How dare he? He doesn't understand radiobiology. He's, as you say, ignoring internal emitters. How dare he? These people are worse than apologists. I mean, you, ca you must not lie in science, and particularly you must not lie when it comes to medicine. Because if you lie when it comes to medicine, you're going to be damaging or killing patients. If we lied in medicine, you know, we'd be deregistered. You can't practice medicine by lying. These people have no right to even comment because they don't know what they're talking about. Or if they do, they're actually lying and they're criminals, I would say, because... Because by lying, people don't know the truth and they can't protect themselves or understand and it will, the ignorance will lead to illness and possibly deaths in the future. This, this is a really, really serious issue, Arnie. You know, my, my biggest... The thing that makes me the most upset about the, um, the Japanese government... Uh, and the Japanese infrastructure is, you know, doctors all over the world take the Hippocratic oath. It's and not it's hypocritic, it's Hippocratic. Actually, you're true, it sounds like Hippocratic, but it's Hippocratic. <laughs> you're right, you're right. 
Well, they've taken the they've taken the hypocritical in Japan, apparently. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. It, it concerns me that that doctors are putting the welfare of the state in front of the welfare of their patients. I know it just takes my breath away. Now, I've got another question unrelated to what we've been discussing, but it, it occurred to me in the last week thinking about all of this. You know, the water they use to cool the spent fuel pool. Is that extremely radioactive, and what happens to it? Does it get recirculated all the time? Is it as radioactive as the water that is used to cool the primary, the, the reactor itself, the primary coolant? Is the cooling water that cools the spent fuel pool the same level of radiation as the water that's used to cool a reactor? Um, unit 4 has the least radioactivity in it, um, compared to the other fuel pools. Um, and, but all of them run through a filter system and get pumped back into the, the reactor. So um, they are much more radioactive than any fuel pool in any picture you see. You know, that pristine water in a fuel pool, uh, um, they are, the, the fuel is damaged, so clearly it's leaking in the fuel pool. The fuel is destroyed in the nuclear reactors, so clearly it's leaking more. Mm. So what we're seeing... Uh, coming, the, the fuel pools have a separate cooling system uh, from the reactors, oh. and that water is still cleaned and still filtered, but is nowhere near as contaminated from the beginning to the um, to the water that's in the um, uh, uh, in the reactors. But yes, it is contaminated. One last question before we end, Arnie Gunderson: What is Japan going to do with all its radioactive spent fuel? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I'm going to Japan next uh, next week, mm -hmm. so from August 27th till the September 7th, and that will be one of the things I'm talking about. Um, the the nuclear establishment never ever talked about what how does it how does this game play out in the end? Where are we going to put the fuel? Um, they always talk about well, we can reprocess it. Of course, that hasn't worked. The Manju reactor. Mm -hmm. Um, has had several accidents and is about a hundredfold more expensive than anybody thought it would be. Um, on an island that's so um, seismically faulted, there is no place to put the fuel. I think they were hoping to, you know, to send it to Mongolia or something like that. Oh, and so really? Goldians got smart and said, we don't want it. Um, it was uh, the game plan, the, the last move in this game was never thought of in Japan. They never said, we live on the most seismically active piece of rock on the planet. Where are we going to put the fuel? And, and then work backward from there. Mm. Instead, they created the plants that created the waste. And now, uh, you know, people like you and I are asking, what's the end game here? And uh, I don't think anybody knows what the end game is. I think some people are thinking about sending it to Australia. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, uh, I, I firmly believe the Japanese were hoping to export it somewhere um, because every seismologist I've ever spoken to said there's no place in Japan to put that nuclear waste that yeah. you can assure to stay out of harm's way for a thousand years, let alone you know, a quarter of a million years. Yeah, well, you know who built the railway line that transports radioactive waste and will transport it through the centre of Australia, Halliburton. You know who was the CEO of Halliburton, don't you, Arnie? Yes, Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney, yeah. That bodes ill for Australia, and they've, they've found a place on Aboriginal tribal land just next to that railway a line uh, called Muckety Station, which sits atop a shallow aquifer, um, which may communicate with our ancient archaeological water, the Great Artesian Basin, that waters much of the desert of Australia. Um, and that's where they're proposing to put our small amount of radioactive waste. But there is a deal that seems to be going on between America and Australia called the Global Nuclear Energy Partnership, signed by George Bush and John Howard, our former Prime Minister, that we may be importing other people's radioactive waste, including maybe from America, and you could extrapolate and say possibly from Japan because much of the uranium in those reactors was Australian fuel, Australian uranium. 
So uh, things look grim from every which way at the moment. Um, you know, I've been saying, I've been saying that uh, if the, the, the proponents of nuclear power say, of course it's safe, and, and you've got to believe us that we know how to store the nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years, and the, the same people who are saying that are saying you, you can't build solar because we haven't figured out a way of storing electricity overnight. <laughs> well, if, if we can store nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years, we can certainly figure out a way of storing electricity overnight and go to a renewable economy. Well, we can because solar thermal reactors are now being built in Spain and elsewhere using liquid salt and other such things, molten salt. So that's, that's a furphy to say that. And I'll end by saying what I say to the nuclear industry when they say, don't worry, we'll work out what to do with radioactive waste. I say, look, that's like me saying to you, you've got pancreatic carcinoma. You'll probably die within six months, but don't worry, I'm a really good doctor. Within 20 years, I'll find the cure. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me, Helen. <laughs> thank you, Arnie, once again. We love you. My guest today on If You Love This Planet was Arnie Gunderson, an energy advisor with over 30 years of nuclear power engineering experience in the United States, one of our most popular guests. That's why we keep having him to update us on the Fukushima disaster, which is ongoing for virtually the rest of time, as you heard today.